One of the charming things about Chromebooks over the years have been the ability to go and buy cheap or affordable or low cost devices that still have enough in them to get some work done. But one of the reasons I've always had an issue saying that people should go buy these low end devices, so sub $300 Chromebooks, is performance. So we all know that when you get under $300, you're gonna get flimsy build materials and bad keyboards and junky screens. That's just kind of part of it. But the kicker for me has always been the fact that they're also just incredibly slow and sluggish at doing everyday tasks. But as it turns out, Chromebooks that have started shipping on the low end in 2020, like this one right here, the Samsung Chromebook 4 Plus and 4 for that matter, are not quite as slow as the ones that came before them. And so because of that, at their low cost, they end up presenting a pretty good value overall. Today's video is brought to you by NordVPN. They're the VPN of choice for millions of consumers because they're awesome at what they do, and that is keeping your browsing safe and secure, whether you're at home or on the go. If you'd like to learn more about them and their services, head over to chromeunbox.com forward slash NordVPN, and you can learn more and get started today. So having said all that, I wanna preface this entire review experience by saying that the Samsung Chromebook 4 Plus is not great at many things. So if you're looking for a device, even though it kind of looks really nice sitting here on the desk, if you're looking for a device that is exceptional in a lot of areas, this is just not the Chromebook for you. But at 300 bucks to start for four gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of internal storage, you shouldn't expect too much from a hardware perspective. There's only so much they can do for that kind of price point and still make some money. They're running a business after all. But what I can tell you is that this thing is faster than you would expect and more productive. So let's get into all the parts that make up this Chromebook experience. As always, first up is build quality. And again, as expected in a sub $300 Chromebook, it's not great. Now, there is one benefit here. The lid of the Chromebook is aluminum. So when it's closed up, it kind of actually has a pretty solid feel to it. It's not super duper hefty. It's a 15.6 inch Chromebook, so it's gonna be larger. But once you crack the lid open, you start to run into some really interesting things. And the bottom chassis, the bottom keyboard area is super duper flexible. Like maybe one of the most flexible Chromebooks I've ever felt. So you're not gonna feel like it's high quality. You're not gonna feel like it's super sturdy. And once you've opened the, the hinge all the way, the lid actually lifts the Chromebook up a little bit and it's makes the keyboard deck just super flexible. And there's no getting around that. I'm not gonna try to paint this as, some marvel of engineering and that it's well put together and still feels sturdy even though it's plastic. It's really none of those things. The lid feels like it's pulled off of a different Chromebook than the rest of the device. Uh, and so that can make it feel a little bit off-putting. I will say though, that when you sit it on a desk and just use it as a regular Chromebook when you're typing on it, you don't really feel the flex that much. Uh, it's there, you're gonna experience it, but this thing is not built like a tank. This thing is not the most well put together or well thought out device. It looks okay and the squared off edges are kind of nice, but overall it feels flimsy and you're gonna notice that as soon as you pull it out of the box. As we move around to the screen portion, you're gonna see other cost cutting measures here as well. This is a TN panel, so the screen viewing angles are bad, the colors are washed out, and it's kinda of hard on a screen this size to get an angle that's just right to where you actually see all the same kind of colors represented on the screen at one time. But it is full HD, so it's 1920 by 1080, it's 15.6 inch diagonal in measure, and that gives you plenty of workable space to use whenever you're using it as a Chromebook, if it's in your lap or it's on a desk. So it is nice to get a full HD screen in a package this cheap, but again, the viewing angles are gonna be bad, colors are gonna be bad, so go in knowing what to expect and you know you can make the most out of the screen resolution and the real estate that you get here. As we come down to the keyboard and trackpad of this device, uh, this is probably my favorite part of this Chromebook, except maybe the performance surprise, and we'll talk about that in just a minute, but the keyboard on here is actually quite solid. If you get around the point where you have a lot of flex in the chassis, so if you have the screen wide open, it really, if you're a hard typer, you're gonna feel that flex. If you kind of open the screen more at a 90 degree angle, 
The whole thing feels solid and the keyboard, like the keys themselves are actually pretty good. They're very quiet. They've got a nice clicky feedback to them. And I didn't really have any problem typing for long periods of time. I, I worked from this thing for almost a week and didn't really have any issues typing, you know, longer articles and posts and it, it got along just fine. The trackpad is, um, it's okay. Uh, it's nice and large and the click mechanism was okay, but because of the flexiness of the chassis, it kind of feels a little bit mushy and it's plastic obviously and it's gonna pick up oils and if you're in a humid condition or anything like that it's it's kind of tough to navigate it's just an okay trackpad it didn't completely detract from the experience and it's by far not the worst trackpad I've ever used it's it's just okay around the sides we have a fairly decent selection of ports USB type C on both sides and both ports do everything you want charge display data transfer all that kind of stuff you do get a USB type A which is again nice for those legacy peripherals you need and a micro SD card slot for expansion along with a headphone microphone jack you kind of have all the IO that you're gonna need one surprise I did have was the quality of the speakers they're not the loudest speakers I've heard on a Chromebook by any means but they are nice and full they have a good round sound to them and kind of get the low ends, the mids, and the highs as well. And a lot of Chromebooks have loudspeakers, but they don't have a lot of fullness. This one doesn't have the loudest speakers, but the speakers do sound full and are actually kind of enjoyable to listen to. Finally, let's talk about performance. This device is equipped with the Celeron N4000 processor, which is the lowest end entry level Intel chip you can get kind of in the current generation of chips. It's paired up with four gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of internal storage. This device also comes with 32 or 128 gigs of storage. I wouldn't recommend 32 gigs. I don't recommend it on any Chromebook. And I would say that you may not need the 128, but if you find it on sale, then great, go for that. The 64 gig model that we have here was 299, and I think that's a fair price for plenty of storage space and you know a fair price. But the main thing I am impressed by with this Chromebook is its performance. The N4000 chip has been around for a little while now, and it's kind of the default chip in low-end Chromebooks. And to be fair, I haven't spent a lot of time with that chip and trying to work from it and use it on a daily basis since it came out until this device came along. And I made myself work every day from this device for a solid week. And I have to say, the N4000 really impresses me. And while there are newer chips already coming out that will eclipse it as far as being the, you know, the de facto low-end Intel chip, I can finally say with a low-end affordable Chromebook that the chip that comes inside of it is not the worst part of the package. And actually, it's pretty impressive. It gets by and does most of what I would even need to do on a day-to-day -day basis. And from time to time, yeah, you're gonna run into hiccups and you're gonna run into stutters, but for the most part, this processor does most of what you'd need to do, and I would feel comfortable giving it to any elementary kid, a junior high student, and a high school student, and feel confident knowing that this processor can hold up and do the stuff they need to do on a day-to-day -day basis. So at the end of the day, where does that leave you as a consumer looking at a Chromebook? I would say this review should inform reviews of other devices like this, because again, there's nothing spectacular about the way that this Chromebook is built. It doesn't have a whole lot of features that set it apart from the rest of the affordable Chromebook lines. What it can tell you is that Chromebooks with the N4000 processor and up are gonna be solid performers. So that's good news. And this particular Chromebook here with its full HD screen, aluminum lid, good keyboard, and solid performance, those things come together to make a decent Chromebook, a decent affordable Chromebook that could be something that fits in really well in your household for a student or maybe even for something to have at the house for working from home. What I'm not gonna tell you is that this is the best Chromebook I've ever used or that I loved every second of, of using this device. I didn't, I don't like low-end Chromebooks, but it doesn't mean they don't have a place and it doesn't mean that they aren't far, far better machines than what they were just a couple years ago. And used to, when I had to talk about low-end Chromebooks, I had the hardest time recommending anyone go out and buy them. But this one, if you're just looking for a machine that gets the bare basics done, that can just power through a handful of tasks and get some web-based stuff done, whether it be learning or working from home, I think it'd be hard to go wrong with the Samsung Chromebook 4 Plus. And I think a lot of you, if you go out and spend 300 bucks on this thing, 
are gonna feel pretty confident that you made a good purchase. But guys, that's it for this one. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, go down there and hit that subscribe button and make sure to hit the notification bell as well if you'd like to be alerted when we make future videos just like this one. Until next time, we'll see you.